if she would survive. It was the first time in my life that I ever had so much doubt. I was really scared. I, I held her hand and, and whispered in her ear that I loved her. When I'm walking around without hair, people know that I'm in the fight of my life. Left untreated, lymphoma of any type is a, is a fatal disease. Cancer can't take your dignity. We really want to really honor that part of a person that cancer can never take away. When people die in accidents like that. Uh -huh. People don't know what to do in a crisis situation when you're in a foreign country. We have a 63-year-old female. She's got a left hemothorax. Time was of the essence to get them back home in the United States. I have never heard of anyone surviving that kind of injury. My friends and I, we drove to Torrey Pine State Park. We um, parked at the top and walked down the beach trail. I remember stepping onto the beach. I remember it being a gorgeous day. And that's sort of where my memory of that day stops. We're at Torrey Pines right now. I'm trying to get a rock to sell on a girl. Um, my mom yelled from downstairs. She yelled my name. But I could hear in her tone that it was not her usual, Daphne, I'm home. I was, there was something else in her voice and told me Anna's been in an accident. My first question, is she alive? She wasn't even able to answer that. We drove to the airport and that's when I sort of lost it. I remember like, screaming in the airport and um, a DSA agent asked me if I'd be okay and I was just sobbing. Uh, they have a major trauma. And then we had to sit on a three and a half hour flight, not knowing if she would survive. Yeah, and then we walked into the emergency room and there she was, beautiful as always, but just asleep. I, I held her hand and, and whispered in her ear that I loved her. And I, I hoped that, that she could hear it. When I first woke up and when I first started remembering Aaron was the person who was there to tell me what had really happened to me. And Anna said something, something like, what happened to my legs? I think I was asking the question out loud that hadn't been confirmed by anyone yet, but I think I knew. I remember just looking at her right in the eye and saying, you know, you were at Torrey Pines and some rocks fell on you and you have a spinal cord injury and the doctors said you won't be able to move your legs again. And there was this long pause and everyone in the room was just holding their breath and Anna looked at us. <laughs> and Anna said, then I guess I'm gonna be a really good swimmer. <laughs> when I'm in the water, I don't really feel any different from anybody else in the water around me. I am gonna take you on your back. Okay. The reason for that is you can breathe. Feeling my mom's, my dad's, my brother's, my sister's pain that they felt for me when I was struggling. Chin up, so, chin up, chin up. Knowing that if, if I didn't keep fighting, that it would hurt them more. And there's always what I call the, the basketball effect. When you first roll over, you're going to go down and then you'll come up. Every time I get into the water, I learn something new about um, the way I need to move my new body um, in order to swim and feel safe and confident in the water. For a lot of people, when they're done swimming, they stand up. But what will you do if you're just out there? And that's where I want you to have that roll. Nice, good job. Yay. How'd that feel? Great, I feel very free. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about swimming, being in water, is that you leave behind any devices you need on land, and you come in, and now it's just you. Anna is, <laughs> she's incredible. There's no other person like Anna. When I first started using my wheelchair, I didn't realize how hard it would be to roll up a ramp or get down a curb. Up and down. Oh! <laughs> like a rock star. <laughs> Through Sharp's occupational therapy program, they really helped me navigate my, my new world. Good job, Anna. Thanks, Mom. And what we're working on is to eliminate the hesitation 
as she, as just to, to maintain the momentum, to go forward, pop up, and keep going, pop up. Not fast, but try without hesitation. And just when I think, is she ready for that? And I throw it out nice. as a possibility, she goes after it. I say uh, we get rid of that platform and try the four inch. Yeah? Yes, you're ready All for right, it. All right, let's do it. All right, as if you ever said no. <laughs> Need more speed, bam. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Sharp and Sharp Rehab sort of set me up for, for success, so I don't want to disappoint them. <laughs> You'll, I mean, you, you've seen her. She just whole face smile, and I mean, her whole life's changed, and she's going after it. They contacted me to help train her for the rock and roll marathon. She was training for that at the time of Ooh, her accident. Feel the burn. Yeah, there you go. So you actually could pedal fast. Okay. <laughs> Wait, no. As soon as it starts getting hard, then start downshifting. Downshift, downshift. You can do it. Once you're on your bike and you can just go as far as you want, wherever you want, that's pretty cool. That's amazing. Gorgeousness! Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> I definitely like to be able to drive to work and to the grocery store and seeing and friends. And all those things. Across the United States? Yes, that too. <laughs> there you go, perfect. perfect. I'm so grateful to my whole team of therapists. I obviously would, I would just be in bed if it wasn't for them. I, they've, you know, taught me how to, how to move again. Do you think that I'll need a ramp and a swivel seat? Uh, probably not. As you continue to work with your therapy people, you're gonna gain a lot more independence. Okay. okay. Yeah, ready. Uh, and when you, you decide where you're going to, what car you're going to purchase, yeah, that's another that thing that's going to be interesting, yeah, because it's okay. a two-handed job to change gears, obviously. Okay. And just let the idle speed take you around the corner by this van. Okay. Not having to think so hard about what is gas and what is brake and what is, where, how do you shift your gears and all those things makes me concentrate so much on exactly. what to do and I hope eventually I'll be able to also focus on the environment. <laughs> Here we go. Good job, Anna. <laughs> Team Anna driving. Very excited to be able to just go somewhere all by myself, even if it'll just be driving along the coast road or um, going to the grocery store. I love the grocery store. <laughs> um, or to work, it's anything that, I just, I can't even imagine. I haven't really been by myself at all. I can't even remember what that feels like. It was about maybe four or five months after her accident. You know, everyone's talking about coming back to work. And Anna's response was, well, I'll be back to work by Christmas, like half time or full time by then. And we all were like, Anna, that's, that's, that's crazy. Why would, how, how are you gonna be able to do that? And come like November, Anna's at work, seeing patients. The first time that I could put my white coat back on and come to work and see patients, that's really when I started feeling like myself and is when I was able to become a, a caretaker, a provider, a physician again. Dr. Aaron King is one of my besties here and colleague. We just bonded immediately. She's been there every step of the way through my medical journey. Being on the patient side, feeling vulnerable and broken, um, helped me really learn what a patient needs from a physician. Yeah, Dr. Hackenberg, and any medical problems? I had to sort of relearn the physical exam a little bit, and just how to you know maneuver around a patient from a different perspective. So when I first enter the room, I'm already kind of at the patient level. So um, although I think patients are a little shocked maybe that I'm on wheels, um, I don't think they mind that you know, usually they're sitting, and so I'm sitting, so we get that eye-to-eye -eye interaction. She's has this, like, unending supply of sunshine that just, like, bursts out of her when she turns the corner. It's, it's her smile. She is, she is just uh, bringing sunshine to everybody's life. She brightens up any room she rolls into. Her colleagues at work uh, call her Dr. Sunshine. Um, which I think is uh, probably for a doctor, that's you know the best title that you can have. And from, from a patient's perspective, that's, um, I mean, what other doctor would you want to have? Everybody 
was just always there. Um, you know, with me, I didn't have to do any of this on my own. And that, I gave you 5% at the top. Yeah. At top. This is your best one. Here's where it gets harder. Stay back, stay back, stay back. There's more of an angle. Underneath all of this is just, this my, my family, my friends, my community, my shark family. It's the ultimate activity of daily living that gives you independence. Yes. Driving independently is the best. I can go wherever I want. this far without my amazing family and friends and everybody, so I'm just super grateful. And in the water, I mean, you don't see she is one that sits in a chair. She just looks like any other swimmer out there. She's a really good swimmer now. I just hope she doesn't let it get in the way because she's still the same Anna. And we don't care if she's sitting or standing. Being in the ocean, being free, being independent, and getting to be my best self is all I could hope for. The sky's the limit for her at this point. Hi. It's time to get up and go get some stuff done. But um, I just wanted to, I guess, get used to seeing you getting used to seeing me like this. Hair, hair will come back. When I'm walking around without hair, people know that I'm in the fight of my life. When Maria came to me with a diagnosis of lymphoma, occasionally lymphoma develops outside the lymph nodes called extranodal lymphoma. And the GI tract is the most common place where that disease develops. Very few people have this, only a couple of percentage of, of the lymphoma cases involved in the extranodal setting. So it's quite rare. Left untreated, lymphoma of any type is a, is a fatal disease. When we get into the realm of rare tumors, the team had to really work together to really optimize chemotherapy and radiation therapy together to give her the best chance for cure. We hanging in there? I am. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. And I'd tell them that, hey, you know, we're here for you. It's what we do for a living. I'm, I'm here to, to serve them and, and, and get them through uh, a really tough time. And I, I, I take that very seriously. We'll get you through it, all right? Mm -hmm. Here we really have a community. We have a, we have a medical community that's taking care of the whole patient, the family. For someone that's sick and not feeling well, you're not focused on things because your mind's thinking, oh, I've got cancer. Uh, it's just nice to know everything's in one place. And the first thing you see when you walk in the room is a garden instead of this big, scary piece of machinery that's huge. That's really a great place to feel like you're at home. One of the nice things about the treatment that we were able to do with Maria is use something called intensity modulated radiation therapy, which allowed us to really wrap the dose around the area that we wanted to treat and spare a lot of the surrounding tissues. The accuracy there is 0.5 to 0.7 millimeters. It's really, really tight. How are you feeling? We turned the footprint of the machine around so it's behind the patient. As one of the construction workers once said, it's behind you to serve you. You're all set for treatment. If you need us for anything, just call out. We can see and hear you the whole time. Are you comfortable? There's a lot of elements that go into having a patient feel comfortable. One of the key elements is to make sure that the patient feels seen and feels heard. Because if they just feel like they're a number that's being pushed through some machinery, that's going to be their experience. It's making them feel like we have the time for them all the time. If 
I can make them smile every day they're here, whether it be 10 treatments or nine weeks, then that's my job. My job is to empathize and make them smile. Everything's going okay for you? Yeah, we're almost done. We are almost done. Cancer can take whatever it is you give it, but there are lots of things that it can't take, like your dignity or your sense of humanness. And so we really want to really support and honor that part of a person that cancer can never take away. We deliver the radiation to kill the cancer, but your mindset is part of what heals you so quickly. You okay? I'm good. I'm yeah. really good. Thank you. It's essential to keep that positive mindset. You know, I'd, I'd ride an elevator with the bald man and I'd tell him great haircut. He would just look at me and say, yeah. I wore the baldness with honor. It was like my badge. You know how when you're a warrior that you're holding your, your badge when you're going into a fight. It was my badge of honor so people could see what I was going through and that I wasn't afraid of it. She also had a follow-up PET CT scan that showed no evidence of disease. And then over time, if we maintain that remission, then we, then we consider this disease cured. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hi, ladies. I am a lymphoma survivor from two and a half years ago, and I took the makeup class because meeting other women that were in the same position that I was in really just made me feel that I wasn't alone. Our Look Good, Feel Better class it helps with makeup when women have lost eyelashes and eyebrows or hair. Um, it also helps with wigs and tying scarves and things like that. It really is helping them to feel like, if I walk out in the community, people aren't gonna be looking at me like I have cancer. I'm gonna feel normal. I can forget about it for a few minutes while I go to the grocery store. They're not gonna say, oh, you look great considering what you're going through. You know, those kinds of things are hard to hear. The hair went, and then pretty soon, you don't feel like much of anything. Just let it go. Yes. Don't hold it in. You don't want that in you. Let it out. These women are feeling hopeless. Sharp and American Cancer Society are here to help these women regain their identity. Oh, you look <laughs> nice. We need to go dancing mm. after this. <laughs> you can start. I could see their transformation, and it was just neat. Their faces just sparkled. Hey, you look adorable. Yes. yes. I'm leaving here feeling like I'm going to be OK. It's wonderful. I've seen a lot of patients transform through this process, and they come out a lot stronger in the end. It can draw out that strength of the human spirit that they otherwise wouldn't know was there. There's just all kinds of great things in store for me. There's, there's a lot of life after cancer. There's a lot of life during cancer. To me, this whole thing was a blessing. I took a lot more out of it than what it took out of me. Hi, this is Hugo. Oh, hey, Hugo, it's Amy uh, in charge here at Sharp Memorial ER. I just want to give you a heads up. We got a call about a female uh, coming out of Puerto Vallarta with multiple injuries. Looks like she's going to come to us as a major trauma. So I wanted to let Global Patient Services know what was going on. We were in Puerto Vallarta uh, for about eight days. Uh, it's a city that we love and the people that we love. And it was about dinner time and Paula cannot pass up a bookstore. And so she wanted to go and check out some Muse books before, uh, before dinner. So she went off and the three of the rest of us went off to La Bistro. This is nice. So why don't we get Paula a drink? She should be here any time. And it's probably a good thing. I don't have details of the accident beyond the impression of the impact of being struck. I mean, people die in accidents like that. I guess I just look at it as not my day to die. I just remember the moment of impact. Remember calling him on my cell phone. Paula? 
I, I would have thought that Hello? Uh, maybe maybe a mirror clipped her on the shoulder going around the corner. The thought of someone actually physically being run over by a city bus. I have never heard of anyone surviving that kind of injury. She had surgery that night, and although her blood count was normal when she came in, throughout the night it continued to drop. It turns out she had multiple fractures in the same ribs, so that it requires uh, assisted ventilation. And once stabilized, uh, they were prepared to operate and do things as needed, uh, except there was one small twist. Hello, Alan. This is Hugo with Sharp Healthcare. Global Patient Services is a unique department within Sharp Healthcare that provides 24-7 assistance for people who are traveling outside of the United States uh, to help assist them in getting back to San Diego to a Sharp Healthcare facility. We are available 724, 365 days a year. No matter what, you are getting a live person. And our biggest problem right now is that she has O negative blood and there's only one unit here in the city. So to get her out as soon as possible was critical and time was of the essence. Yeah, bye-bye. When you're traveling, it can become a financial as well as emotionally devastating experience. And most people don't know what to do in a crisis situation when you're in a foreign country. Unidad de Cuidados Intensivos. Ah, buenas tardes. Este, habla Hugo del Hospital Sharp Memorial en San Diego, California. Quería verificar si tenía una paciente en su hospital. Sí. We can initiate the ball to start rolling. We're like the 911. We're the behind the scenes for everything. We pull everybody together. We have a global transfer from Puerto Vallarta later today. Um, it's going to be a major trauma. Um, she was hit by a bus. Logistics is my role in this whole process, and that includes communicating with the radio nurse, the trauma nurse, the administrative liaison. Max, care ambulance. And they, they were terrific. So they were, in the meantime, trying to locate a plane and a crew. We're there at the time of a crisis situation, and we help take all of that pressure off of the patient, off of the family. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes, going that extra mile. We don't stop. The only glitch we had was when we, we were supposed to fly into Brown Field, and it was fogged in. Copy that, Sharp. Dispatch this shift 618. Rerouting your pickup. We ended up flying into the commuter terminal at San Diego International. We have a 63-year-old female. She's our global patient from Mexico. Hemoglobin is five. So I, I knew Paula was going to be taken care of. Um, the trauma team had been made aware of, of how severe her injuries were, and I knew she was in the right place. It was all kind of a blur. Again, my, my focus was clearly right on Paula and making sure that she got funneled to where she needed to go. Um, he was emotionally drained, um, and just being there for him is, is a privilege that I could share with um, him. Hugo. Oh, hi, Hugo. Hey, you guys made it Good here. Well, I have some memories of being in Sharp in the very, very early stages where they were trying to orient me. And she had lots of injuries, OK? The most life-threatening ones, I would say, were her rib fractures. And three of those rib fractures were actually broken in two places. The fracture of the right elbow in multiple places, and on the left side, just a more simple fracture of her elbow. She also had a fracture of her ankle, a fracture of the scapula, that's the wing bone. I then arrange for the consults that I need, like Dr. Smith. See, there's a break here and here in multiple locations, and I can scan back, and you can see the breaks are all along here and all along here. Whenever I'm taking care of a trauma patient like Paula, you're in a situation where you start taking care of the injuries before you've really got to meet them as a person. But over the course of a recovery, and you know, we've had multiple conversations, those are the conversations that start becoming very meaningful because you get to know the patient, how they're doing, and what things are still troubling them. How are you? Better and better. Good, you look great. I, I'm feeling good. I just feel stronger and I feel better every day and I feel just more like me. And I keep asking people, uh, do you see the same me? And they, they assure me that, that they do. And she actually made steady progress, great, great progress in rehab. Started her OT and PT. Alan and I, throughout most of our married life, have had boats. She's working on steps, 
she'll need to be able to negotiate the stairway in the boat. Well, even over at rehab, we discovered that her AC joint that was injured was starting to, to shift up more and become more of a problem because of the way it was lifting up. So we brought her back and put that back together. And that relieved her a lot. And she even was doing shockingly well considering the injuries. We're like, wow, she's fantastic. She's flying. She's flying, you know, and I get to be part of it. So I'm real lucky. Given her nature of her accident, I can't believe it. And I'm so proud of her. And that's Paula. Today, I'm measuring you at 50. Yay. Sharp offers so many different modalities, acupuncture, massage, yoga, Reiki, Qigong. It's about listening to what the patient really needs, what the problem is, and finding the best solution. Practicing yoga, it's given me a lot of physical and spiritual well-being. One of the things that I'm looking to get back to is a full yoga practice. Due to having more, my independence on the boat and it's just being out on the water. This isn't a job. This is, this is more. what we do. We do make a difference. Beautiful day. Beautiful day out on the water. It is nice to be out again. Fortunate I've had Alan with me through this whole healing process. You know, she is integral to my life. She's part of me. Alan and I, we've been married for 39 years, and we've, we've had an, an adventure. We want you to go out and just conquer the world. We want you to live the best life, the fullest life, the longest life, the most fulfilled life, full of love and happiness that you possibly can. Destiny had this change for me. If I look at these pictures and I think I went through a lot to be here, it was a really good wake-up call to give me a second chance. Every moment in your journey matters. It matters to you and it matters to us. She did all of these amazing things that some people don't even do who can use their legs just perfectly. I think she deserves a huge amount of praise and admiration for what she has done and what she will do because it's pretty incredible. The most important thing we bring to our work is compassion. A year ago, today, I was scared. The thought of losing her was torturous, and I didn't want to think about it. But my sister is here today, stronger than ever. I'm happy not because I think your struggles are small, but I'm happy because your greatness outweighs them. Happy first birthday, Anna. Your Sharp experience begins when you choose a doctor at Sharp.com. Be sure your health insurance includes Sharp.